Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be taking the BMW i8 out on a 0 to 60 test to test the tune that I just received this past week at Castle Performance. Now if you haven't seen that video, there's a link in the description below. I decided to take the car up to Castle to have them tune it and the reason is because they wanted to actually see what the performance figures were like. They also wanted to do a test tune, but in the process I said, I have a friend in the UK, Alex and he has a tune that he's been developing on the road on his BMW i8. I said, can you guys flash that tune because I want to test it? He doesn't have any dyno numbers. They said, sure. So for the past week, I've been driving around on Alex's tune in the BMW i8, and I wanted to make sure that I obtained some 0-60 to numbers because these are pretty much the only performance stats that I can obtain legally on the roads. So what am I trying to accomplish with this test? Well, a lot of people say when you tune a car, you have a placebo effect, and that's very true. You purchase a product, and it has a up to this many horsepower and this many torque numbers, and you install it on your car, and you're like, wow, this made a huge difference. This test is to be able to say, I've compared what this car was like in the past to what it is now before and after tuning. Sadly, when I picked up the tool that measures the performance, when I ran it, I had video and I lost it. Uh, I don't know where it's at. I, I record a lot of videos and sadly I don't have that initial video. So what I may end up having to do in the future is to actually go back to stock and run this again. All I can tell you is I had a 4.3 0 to 60 time on the BMW i8. It was in February, it was cold, and I was running the exact same tires that I'm running now. The all season continental DWS 06 Extreme Contact Tires. But more about this tune that I have in the car. First off, I didn't want to tune the car. <laughs> Alex reached out to me and said, I've been testing this tune on the street. Are you interested in it? I said, nah, I'm not. I, I'm happy with the car the way it is, but deep down inside I was missing a little bit more performance. But I just didn't feel that it was worth the cost or the time to take this to somebody and have them put the tune in the car. So a series of events happened. Number one, I went with Thick Garage to have his 5 Series tested at Castle Performance on the dyno, and they also did a custom tune there. While I was there, it was very close to the end of the day, and I said, I have a friend in the UK who wants to try a tune on this car. He just needs the bin file from the engine module. And Jim at Castle said, we'll pull it. Matter of fact, we'll pull it, send it to him. If he sends us a copy back, we'll go ahead and do a test. Bring the car back, we'll put it on the dyno, I want to see what I can do as far as improving performance, and we'll then leave you with uh, with Alex's tune on the car. And he told me, I'm going to send you the tune. And the reason he did that is because the tune is not for sale. You see, Alex has a shop where he does tunes on other vehicles, and the i8 is something he owns. He wanted to get a better seat of the pants feel in his i8, so he decided to tune it. He'd make tuning and modifications and then monitor exactly what the engine was doing. In doing that, he was able to improve his performance, but he never had it on the dyno before. So we gathered dyno numbers for the first time, and now we're going to gather 0 to 60 numbers. So what device do I use to gather 0 to 60 numbers? It's called Draggy. The Draggy performance meter is one of the top two devices that you can use in your own vehicle to test everything from 0 to 60 times all the way up to uh, quarter mile times and even mile times. The V-Box seems to be the highest standard, but it's also the most expensive. The Draggy is the second most expensive device out there. This device is a little module that sits on the dash, and it picks up multiple satellites. So the satellites are used in order to track how fast you're actually achieving the 0-60 to 60 time, for example. It needs a lock on multiple satellites, or it will not verify the time. So you can make multiple runs in this car and they'll come back unverified because you happen to be driving through trees and canopy cover uh, block the view of the satellites. So that's bad. And I had that happen multiple times when I first attempted to get 0 to 60 times in this car. Each time I took it out, different things were happening. Um, if the humidity was high, I had wheel spin. So here I am, I get on it, the wheels are spinning, obviously that's going to knock a half a second off my 0 to 60 time. And in many cases, I had so much tree cover and canopy that Draggy said it's invalid, it wouldn't be certified. So over the past few days, I decided I'm just going to try to find a clear spot. 
I went out to the interstate where the speed limit is 70 miles per hour and I could get to zero to 60 legally with no problem at all. I pulled off to the side of the road. I configured the car for DSC off. That's turning off the dynamic stability control. I put my foot on the brake. I mashed the gas. And when I let off the brake, I saw a checkered flag on the dash. I did not expect to go into launch control mode at all. I just wanted to do a quick test. It went into launch control mode and it produced astonishing figures. Here's the video so you can see exactly what I saw. All right, I'm on the side of the highway. I'm gonna go ahead and do my uh, zero to 60 test. I have all my zero to 60 stuff ready to go. Brakes on, sport mode, traction controls off. Let's give it a try. seconds okay uh, that's impressive all right that's all I need to do for right now <laughs> now that I'm back from the test I have the results here and if you're not familiar with exactly how to use draggy I'll have a link in the description below draggy documents this so you don't actually have to learn from me so I'm not going to go through the process here it's really easy to use but I want to look at some of the times and some of the figures and I'll post it up on the screen as well. So, so first off, in the performance report, it says that it was 72 degrees. It says my altitude above sea level, but it also says my density altitude and that's 2000. It feels like 2000 feet above sea level, even though I'm way below that. So density altitude affects exactly how the car performs. It means that it would actually perform better, let's say in winter conditions. Um, things like that. So let's look at the next thing on the graph here. We show the speed. There's a speed line and that goes from uh, zero all the way up to 60. And you can see that it has a slight curve to it. Uh, it seemed to take off quickly and then slowly dip down as far as how quickly it got to 60. The height is a line that shows I descended and it's saying negative 0.87% grade. So that equates to about one and a half feet or uh, about half a meter. So that helped me, uh, obviously gravity helped me a tiny bit, but I can't find a perfectly flat surface. It is what it is. Over the period of 188 feet, I got a 3.95 seconds, zero to 60. And I also wanna talk about the acceleration. If we look at the acceleration part of the graph here, the orange part, we have a peak of one G, and that's where you shift from first to second. So this tune has actually increased a seat of the pants feel that I noticed. It also locks up my seatbelt. Like if I let, if I'm doing a zero to 60 and I let off the gas, there's a weight in the seatbelt tensioner that locks up the seatbelt. And it's there in case you get rear-ended, for example. So you don't have that effect from being rear-ended and then coming to a deceleration quickly from moving your body forward. It's doing the same thing. It's, it's, it's like a safety effect. So I'm getting that much acceleration that when I let off the gas, the seatbelt is tightening on me. That's probably the only annoying thing about this. So I'm getting a 1G acceleration that I know I haven't felt before, but it's in the graph. I can't tell you, oh, it feels better, and you'll believe me, it's actually in the graph. But if we look at the very bottom, we can see all the zero to 10, zero to 20, all the different speeds that it takes to get to zero to another speed. But what's an interesting finding at the very bottom, zero to 60, one foot, 3.7 seconds. This is the figure that I would get if I was racing at a racetrack. The reason why is because when you're at a racetrack, you have a beam of light that you roll into. Once you hit that beam of light, you then get the tree that goes you know, yellow to green and you go. When you give it gas, the first one foot, your tire's rolling through the beam. So the beam of light doesn't actually get unobstructed until the tire passes through. That means that you've rolled one foot and then the timer started. If I was at a racetrack, I would have run a 3.7 second uh, zero to 60 at a racetrack. 
So this information is very important to me. It helps me realize that the car does perform sub four seconds. And finally, I wanna talk about the fuel that I was using. It was 93 octane, it's premium fuel here in the United States. I also had a quarter tank of gas. So I didn't have a full tank, just a quarter tank. And I had about 13 miles of electric range. I only did one pull. I didn't do multiples, I did one. And the reason I did one is because I've done so many over the past few days and my numbers were all over the place and Draggy let me know. Some were valid, some were invalid. They were just all over the place and I was getting wheel spin. This day, on in these conditions, 50% humidity, so I had less wheel spin. And on this side of this road with this texture of, of road surface, I got these figures. So your mileage may vary. <laughs> you, you may end up getting uh, totally different results. But with my BMW i8 on Alex's tune, these are the numbers. So what's next? What am I going to do next with the i8? Well, I, I have a few things in mind. Number one, I'm considering putting 100 octane race fuel in the car. It's unleaded. It's legal for street use. It will not damage catalytic converters. It will not damage O2 sensors. So I'm considering putting that in the car because his tune, according to him, should take advantage of the increased octane in order to change the timing, and then I could get different results. So I'm eagerly wanting to give that a try. It's just that that fuel may cost three to four times more per gallon than normal premium. So it'll only be for testing. I'm not going to drive that all the time. Also, I want to go back and try the Castle Tune. So I expect to go back to Castle Performance. Uh, we want to get some more runs with the car fresh off the street and it's not heat soaked and the battery's not dead to see exactly what Alex's numbers are. We then can do a stock run and then we can get the uh, Castle Tune. And I definitely want to try that on the road. So if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell for notifications as I'll be posting more BMW i8 content. Thanks for watching and happy motoring.